What's up everybody, Mike Burke here with Inside Real Estate Photography. And in this video, we're gonna go over what some of the advantages are of hand blending your images over just doing an HDR merge inside a Lightroom. All right guys, so here we are in Lightroom. I have two exterior images here. They are five brackets, two stops apart. They are JPEGs, but you could do this with RAW. It doesn't matter. All right, so what we're gonna do here is edit these two images in two different ways. We're gonna merge them in Lightroom, just doing an HDR merge and edit them that way. And then I'm gonna hand blend each one of them. So you can see the difference between the two and kind of get an idea of what the advantages are of hand blending the images instead of just doing an auto merge. So the first thing we're gonna do is just do a merge on these two images. So I'm just going to select all of these and go to control or right click and go to stacking and then auto stack by capture time. And since these were shot within a few seconds of each other, it knows to stack them those images together. I have it set on five seconds, so any images shot within five seconds of each other will stack. All right, so now that they're stacked, I'm gonna go to File, and I'm gonna go to Plugin Extras, and go to Blend Exposures using Lightroom and Fuse. I use this plugin called Infuse to uh, merge my images over the HDR in Lightroom. So if you wanted to do it the Lightroom way, you could just control click on these and go to photo merge and then HDR. And I like the way Infuse does it better. I like the results of that better. I know I mentioned that in other videos. It's a free plugin, so you can just install that plugin and you would find it in here once you install it. I don't mess with any of these settings, configuration, auto align, Infuse, uh, output. I just put an appendage of HDR on it so I can search them out easier and um, I might have changed a couple other minor things here, but basically I'm using default settings. Um, but yeah, you can take a look at the screen and see what I did. This is the only tab that I've changed anything on. So I'm just gonna hit infuse. All right guys, so now that those images have infused, now I've created a new collection that has our five bracketed photos in it from each image and also the merged image from infuse. So here we have this merged image. So this is what it looks like when it merges automatically through infuses settings. You know, it looks pretty flat, but we're gonna edit it and give it some more contrast and things like that to make it pop a little bit better. Obviously merging them and infuse and then editing them is a much faster process than hand blending, but you have a lot more control over hand blending. So that's the advantage of it. When I would use hand blending is if I did like a flambient or flash ambient blend for the interior, since I'm hand blending all those images, I would also do the hand blending for the exterior images. You know, I charge more for that service, so, but a lot of shoots I just do straight HDR, so in those cases, I would do just an auto merge like this and merge all the images and just edit them quickly. You know, it's a lesser tier service, it costs less money, it takes less time. So I'm just gonna do auto here, I like to start with that. So I'm gonna take the highlights down, raise the shadows just a little bit, I'll add some clarity into this. the shadows up a little bit more and take the luminance slider and just bring the sky in here a little bit better here make that pop a little bit also a little bit on the grass just bring the luminance down on that all right so in a nutshell that would be basically it that i would do for this image in hdr merge situation you know it's quick it's easy you're in and out quick you can blow through them quickly and you get a decent result. So, you know, you can see this looks pretty good. You know, there's a couple things more I would do here, maybe fix the grass up a little bit and, you know, do a few touch-ups here and there. Now that we've done that, let's take our bracketed images here that we have, the five brackets, and hand blend them. So what I'll do here is I'll just select the five brackets. I'm gonna go right click or, or control click, and then I'm gonna go to edit in open as layers in Photoshop. One thing I'd mention before you do that, if you shot raw or whatever, and you wanted to add your profile corrections in Lightroom and then sync all of the photos and all that, you would do that first before sending them over to Photoshop. All right, so now that these are open in Photoshop, you'll see that we have five layers here and each layer is one of the bracketed photos. What I like to do first is I'll just select all these layers and just to make sure that they're all lined up correctly, which they should be, it was shot on a tripod, but just in case, if you go to edit and then align, auto align layers and auto align and just hit okay. This will just make sure that all your layers are lined up perfectly. So when you start blending, you don't get any ghosting or anything in case 
one of your frames was slightly off. As you can see, it did straighten it out a little bit because we've got some fringe around the outside. So just to take care of that, just crop in a little bit. Oops, sorry. Just crop in a little bit here. So what I like to do is, well, I like to find my dark frame that has a good sky in it. Um, let's see, this is the darkest frame. So, you know, you can really see the cl sky clearly in this frame. It would be one of the two darker frames. I'm actually gonna go with the darkest frame here on top. Next, I wanna find a frame that has the house exposed well. So I'm gonna take one of these middle frames. And that's pretty good. That's too overexposed, but we'll probably end up using that for some areas. But generally, I like the way the house is in this frame. So I'm gonna use that. So I have this one on top and then I have my darker frame underneath with the sky. First thing I'm gonna do is just create a layer mask and then I'm gonna do Command I to invert that or you just wanna fill it with black so basically it disappears. And over here, we wanna make sure we have white selected. So when we paint on this black layer mask, what, what's underneath will show through. And we wanna select our brush tool. Important, we want a really low flow, like 5% flow. And you also want a soft brush. I have it set at 27%. I make my brush fairly big here. And I'm just gonna start brushing in the house here. Trees. So the advantage of hand blending this is now, as you can see, we have full control over what we're revealing and not revealing and just how we're blending this instead of just the computer deciding how to do it. And it will result in a much richer image, in my opinion, so. And a much more controlled image. You wanna be careful about going over the sky because as you'll see, you'll, get, you'll start to get fringing like that going on. So you wanna avoid that. You could mask out the sky so that doesn't happen. I have a twilight video that I kind of show you how to do that. Um, I'll link to that up on the screen right now. I use that method there, but here we can get away with not having to do that. So, all right, so now I've blended in that brighter image. I got a pretty good exposure on the house now. You know, some of this area is obviously on the porch is pretty dark. You know, some of this tree area is dark and the shadow area on the lawn is pretty dark still. Just kind of go over this a little bit closer here. Trees. If you think you went too far, or you think something's too bright, you know, you could just hit X key and switch back to black and start and just paint it black in. So this is this is what I mean. It's just maximum control over how your image looks and the exposure of everything. Yeah, this is too dark up here. So so I think that's good for that. Now let's find a brighter exposure here so we can bring in some of the detail here on the porch and some of the detail here on the tree. Let's see what we got here. This brighter one, I think. That's really bright, obviously in most areas, but that'll be good to help us, as you can see here, bring in some of this detail on the porch and the tree here. So let's keep that on top now and create another layer mask. Again, Command I to invert that layer mask to black with our brush here with white selected. Now we can start adding in some of this detail here some of this detail. Helps to use a large brush too. And like I said, this porch, bring in some of this. This garage, this face of the house over here. Brighten this up a little bit here. Driveway here is a little bright. I'm going to go back to this other layer here. See if we can paint some of the dark back in here. There we go. Just to bring in some of that detail. It looks like overexposed here a little bit. And generally I'm liking the way this looks. Now the sky, as I was saying, it's a little dark. I'm just going to take a really big brush here on this second layer again. That's like, got a somewhat of a lighter sky, just to brighten this sky up just a little bit. Just kind of click around on it. Make it look a little bit more like it should. 
All right, so when you're happy with how your image is blended, you can just uh, merge all these layers down and save your image. Now we're gonna do our final edits in Lightroom. So I'm gonna switch back to Lightroom. So here's where we're at. Here's the HDR image from before. And here's the one we're working on now. So as you can see, it's more rich image already. You know, the shadows are deeper. It has more contrast to it. It has more life to it. Now let's just do some edits in here to finish this off. Obviously it needs tweaks still, global tweaks. So I'm just gonna hit auto here. I like to start by hitting auto. That's just how I like to do things. So shadows up a little bit, add some clarity into this. Yeah, so here's our hand blended image. And then here's our merged image in Lightroom. So you can see the difference between the two and you know, you can judge for yourself. Obviously, you know, there's nothing wrong with the merged image, but you know, it's a little flat. It's a much flatter looking image. Um, like I said, it has a lot less life to it, I think, than this does. You know, it's more work, obviously, as you saw, you know, you have to take and spend more time on it, but you know, the result is better, I think, and it's a nicer looking image. All right, so let's go on to this next image. This is actually a drone shot. So this is the merged image here. So let's just edit this merged image real quick again. So I'll just hit auto and I'll bring our highlights down. Clarity up a little bit. Bring our blacks down. All right, so yeah, so basic tweaks there. You know, again, nothing crazy. I'm not gonna get it too involved on that. Let's take our five frames here and send them over to Photoshop. So I'm gonna edit and open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. Again, we have them each as loaded as layers in Photoshop. So I'll select these again, and then I'm gonna to go to edit, auto align layers, and just do an auto align to make sure they're lined up. Especially with the drone being that it blows in the wind, you might have some alignment issues. So we'll just crop that out a little tad bit. Just gonna use a little bit of a crop anyway. So I'll crop in on a little bit. All right, so now we're ready to blend. So it already looks like this dark, darkest frame here is probably gonna be the one to start with. Again, I'm gonna just hide that and find you know, the frame that I like how the house is exposed. So that one's looking pretty good. Let's just take this up here and put that on top. All right, so I'm just gonna add a layer mask and invert that layer mask to black. And again, we're gonna take our brush tool, 5% flow, you know, our hardness down, nice soft brush. And I'm just gonna start brushing in the house here because I like the exposure. Make, make sure you have white selected. You can hit the X key to toggle back and forth between that. So. I'm just gonna start painting over this house here. So I'm not doing a whole lot of here. These exposures aren't that different, but the house is brightening up now. So you can see by, uh, you know, toggling that on and off what it's doing. Even some of this landscaping, I'm gonna paint down some here a little bit. So now the house is looking pretty good. I like how it's exposed pretty much. I'm gonna find a brighter frame here. Let's see what this one looks like. I'm gonna just bright, start brightening up some of this other landscaping and stuff. This tree a little bit. So you know, just painting around until I like the way it looks, so. And you can hand blend fairly quick too. You know, the more you do this, the faster it becomes. All right guys, I think that's pretty good. Actually, I'm pretty happy with that blend. So I'm gonna merge these layers and then save this document and then go over to Lightroom and do our final tweaks. All right, so we have our image now in Lightroom. Let's do auto. Just 
here we have our hand blended image and then our merged image. Sometimes maybe not as dramatic as the previous, but you can see the richness here still. I mean, it's significant. The merge is definitely a flatter image. Even after you edit, you can add contrast into it, but it's still not quite as rich and nice looking as you can get by blending by hand. So that's basically what I wanted to illustrate in this video. So we can export these images and take a look at the final images. All right, guys, so I hope this video illustrated to you how it can be advantageous to hand blend your images over just doing a merge in Lightroom. There are benefits to both methods, as I mentioned in the video. It's just a matter of figuring out what works best for you and your workflow. If you did find this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate the support. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.